Okay, hi everyone. Thanks for joining in. I'm excited to have Ma Madeline Eskendahl joining us. So thanks, Madeline, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Madeline was born and raised in Sweden on the beautiful island of Gotland in the Baltic Sea, living a carefree childhood filled with adventures and surrounded by Viking remnants. Her creativity was actively encouraged by her family. Madeline was a ferocious reader from an early age and a fondness for mystery and convinced she became a private detective or a spy when she grew up. Madeline moved to New Zealand in the early 90s, now married with two daughters. Her family also consists of a trio of West Highland white terriers, Harry, Archie and Gemma. Um, I have to say I love seeing your Highland terriers on your Instagram account. Thank you. <laughs> Apart from being a bookworm and a polygot, she loves walking on the beach, her beloved Westies, yoga, painting, patchwork, and spending time with family and friends. Her thriller, Blood on Vines, and we can see your one there, and I've got my copy here. We'll be at, well, sorry, Blood on Vines is the first installment in the Matacana series and will be out in March, sorry, was out in March 2021. And the second book in the series, Rings on Water, is underway. So thanks so much again for joining us. Want to say you've been our author for the day before, so great to have you back again. And also want to say to people watching that if you do have a question, please type it in comments and you'll actually have a chance to win a copy of Blood on Vines. So that's great. Thanks, Madeline. Thank you so much. Do you want to start off by telling us a bit about Blood on Vines? Oh, sure. Uh, Blood on Vines is a New Zealand thriller set in Matakana wine country. Um, the prologue in some parts of it is, is set in a different part of the country, which is called Martinborough. So it's the south end of the North Island, so it's close to Wellington. Um, the main part of the book, though, is set up here, up north. Now, Matakana is uh, about 70 k's north of Auckland, our largest city in New Zealand. It takes about an hour to drive, which makes it an ideal holiday and weekend destination. People flock. Now, um, the area has got uh, an amazing feel uh, and a, a, it's a unique sense of place. Um, fertile hills, um, picturesque vineyards, beautiful beaches, uh, rugged coastlines, um, and dense bush. And it's the perfect place, in my mind, to set mm. a thriller. Hence the first one's there, and um, obviously the second one will be the same. Um, the area produces um, uh, Merlot, Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, um, Chardonnay, and Pinot Gris, to name a few. Um, as well as uh, a multitude of vineyards, uh, Metacana is famous for uh, an artisan farmer's market, which is lovely and, and very, very busy and popular. Um, the population is, is not that big. It's, it's only about 500 uh, people living here all year round, although this, this swells uh, by thousands on, on weekends and holidays, especially in the summer. Um, Blood on Vines, the book, is set over a seven-day period, just before harvest time. Um, and uh, we start off at Matakana Valley Wines, where um, Avery and Lexi are struggling with the stress of running the vineyard, family life, and teenage children. And their world takes a sudden and disturbing turn when a grisly find is discovered beneath their house. Um, Bill, the local cop, he's a sole charge cop, but over the summer uh, period, he has a seconded um, colleague come in, Nico. So Bill is looking forward to the end of a very, very busy uh, holiday season. Um, and when this is happening and, and this, this uh, what they find underneath the house, all hell breaks loose, mm -hmm. which seems ripples throughout the close-knit community. And yeah. yeah, no, that that's a great summary of the book. And then there's there's actually Rings of Waters following on from that. How long will people have to wait for Rings of Water? Well, um, hopefully at the end of the year. Oh, great! It's, it's well underway, yeah. so yeah. I'm, I'm hoping 
we can get it up by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very exciting. Second yeah. one and the third one is in the planning stages. Oh, really? Already. Yeah, no, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And Matakana, is that a place that you're quite, were quite familiar with before? Do you have attachment to that place? Yes, we've spent uh, a lot of time up, up uh, Matakana mm. way. Um, and uh, since the children were small, they are now grown and in uni. Um, and we've actually, uh, writing the book, I probably spent a couple of nights a week here um, and really soaking up the atmosphere. And we're actually living here full time now. Mm, nice. So um, yeah. I I'm just loving it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And getting totally immersed in your book session right. and, mm, yeah mm. and i have to say um being in new zealand myself and i'm actually in new zealand at the moment which is great um i really liked the because we don't get a lot of new zealand authors to read um really liked like the new zealand terms that you use in the book and the scenery and everything like that it was really great to see that what right. sort I of really, feedback are really you getting so. Um, well, people are, yeah, I've had great feedback mm -hmm. and, um, you know, for me personally, I, you know, I wanted to set the book here and we've got such oh. an amazing country to write about. Mm -hmm. And, and I think, you know, it's actually, there's quite a few crime writers around, mm -hmm. um, and some have been around for a while and some are emerging. Um, but the feedback has been fantastic. It's, um, it's available throughout the country mm. um, and also overseas through any bookshops. But um, yeah, overwhelmingly, um, people are, you know, excited, can't wait mm. for the next mm. one. Mm. Um, and, and it's been well received, which is great. Mm. It's very heartwarming. Mm. Yeah. And what was the first thought you had for Blood on Vines? Well, I think I've always written, um, but I think the thriller in me has always wanted to to come out and I've never I haven't had the opportunity you know until a couple of years ago when the kids were finally of an age where I didn't need to ferry them around everywhere mm. so I thought it's time for me and I wanted to develop this idea and I think um spending time here over the years I've always had I've always thought it would be a great setting for for a crime um I mean, not only has the area got a wonderful diversity of people, but also such a rich tapestry of artisans, entrepreneurs, winemakers, uh, which ultimately makes the book come alive. Not to mention the the influx of the visitors, you know, which is you know adds another interesting layer mm -hmm. to the whole dimension. And also, I love um, small town goings on, um, the community spirit, um, the fact that everyone knows everything uh, of everyone else's business, something that's not always good, but it's, mm. you know, something you can build on, you know, uh, and, and I'm a, I'm a country girl and, and an Islander at heart. So I, I, I can relate to that setting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And being a writer, is that something growing up that you always thought you would eventually get into? Well, um, yes, I've, I, I mean, as I said, I've, I've always written mainly journal, short stories. When the children were young, I always wrote more mm. adventurous short stories for them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's I, I, I guess I'm a creative. I, as you said, I, I do, you know, I, I like painting. I like patchwork. I, mm. I like the creative side. Mm. So I'm just thriving. I'm having a wonderful time and I just mm. feel very lucky. Mm. And do you have another job as well or is writing your full-time job now? Yes, no, um, I do, or we do. We've got our own business, but so I, I, I don't get to write full time. Mm. But how I do you arrange with... your, how do you arrange your time to fit it all in? Well, I, I, I like to write early in the morning. So sometimes mm -hmm. I just, I just map out or put aside a little bit of time. Otherwise, I'll try and get some time in the afternoon. Maybe mm. Uh, mm. I'm terribly tired at night, so I can't do it at night. But mm. you know, morning or or for some period in the afternoon mm, yeah mm. and how hard or easy was it to get blood on vines published and was that the first book you did try to get published yep it's the first book that i've got published mm. there's a few in the drawer i must mm. say um i think 
in my experience, I think it's very difficult to get a book published. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with being in the right place at the right time. And for me, being part of a small New Zealand imprint perhaps was advantageous for my first book. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've got a few difficult. people watching, which is great. So just reminding people watching that if you want to have a chance to win a copy of Blood on Vines, please type any questions you have in comments and I can read them out. Um, I've got a similar question, both from Joanne Belinda. Um, they're wondering what you like to read yourself and maybe if there's anything you want to recommend to us that you've been reading um, lately. Yes. So many good books now. Mm. Uh, in fact, there's not enough time. Yeah. Why a to be read pile is massive. Mm. In, in fact, you know, it's it's toppled over. Um, I love, uh, as far as Kiwi Australian authors, for example, I love the likes of Vanda Simon, uh, the Sam Shepherd series, uh, anything Paul Cleave, um, Jane Harper, of course, uh, Michael Robotham. Mm. Um, as for Scandinavian authors, Nordic authors, um, Henning Mankel, um, the, the Kurt Wallander series, um, Anna Dahl, I don't know if anyone knows, Joe Nispo, uh, the Harry Holler series, um, uh, Kamala Lechberg, um, Vivica Stein, uh, and a really, really interesting one is um, Lilia Sigurdagothi, she's Icelandic. Okay. And her books are, yeah, fantastic um sneer trap and cage i think they're called um just wonderful mm. writing um but um books that i've read lately um i loved paul cleave's um the quiet people that was fabulous i don't know if you've read it amazing no, I haven't read um and i've just finished no i've got a, a, a range of actually new zealand australian authors mm. or yeah, new zealand actually um, I've just finished Boxed by um, Stephen Johnson. He was actually a Nio Marsh finalist. Oh, okay. Um, fabulous. Mm. And that's uh, Clandestine Press. Um, to the Sea. Okay, Nikki yeah, I've got that one to read soon because I'm yeah, interviewing really good. her um, next her week. Yeah. I know. Mm. Oh, oh, she's lovely. Yeah. Um, and her previous ones are Nothing Bad Happens Here, No One Can Hear You, and The Murder Club. Mm. Fabulous. Mm. Um, Another really good one is Ian Austin. I don't know if you've, he might have been a... I think, um, yeah, I think we've had him as author for the day. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, this is his is... latest Bonded mm, in the okay. Dan Calder series. Yeah. Um, Angus McLean, have you? No. He, he's fantastic. No. Very mm. prolific. Um, and he writes action-based thrillers. And this is tomorrow's um, author of the yeah. day. Yeah. Joe yeah. McCready, mm. fabulous author with our RJ Rock series. Love them. Um, yeah, so there's, there's lots. Mm. You know, um, I'm reading The Water's Dead at the moment. Um, is that one which by? is by Catherine yeah, Lee. Yeah, Catherine okay. Lee. Yeah. It's just come mm. out. Um, really good. And um, another favourite, last one, Charity Norman. Oh, yes. Remember me? That's yeah, one I'm just about to read and that I'm, one as well. Mm. I loved her previous one. Um, mm. You know, fantastic. So th mm. there's a lot. Yeah, no, that's a, lot, a, a lot for us books. to add to our list. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Belinda wonders if crime's the only genre you write. It is at the moment. Um, I, as I said before, I I really enjoyed writing for my kids. So they were more adventurous stories for children. Mm. Uh, and I, I may develop that at some stage. Uh, but at the moment, I am 100% immersed in my thriller writing, just so loving it. Yeah, yeah. And I think you said earlier, are you currently um, writing the third in the series? Is that correct? No, I'm writing the second. Oh, Rings you're still writing, water. yeah. But you've got um, a third and one planned. Then yes, mm. the third one is is on the, on the planning stage. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And are they all set round that same sort of area? They're all set around with the same main protagonist, mm. Bill Granger. Um, and obviously, there's going to be other characters that come and go. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, no, the development of the interesting thing is, Matakana doesn't have a police station, oh, and in the yeah. in the series, mm. it's got a fictitious um, sole charge. You know, so in the winter, it's only the one person, mm. but Nico does get brought in, which makes it an interesting. Um, 
you know, relationship because Bill being a little bit older, he's in his 50s, and Nico um, is a Samoan um, South Auckland constable, um, 25, you know, and they, they have got quite a, uh, an interesting relationship. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And when writing a series, how do you keep things fresh for both your readers and yourself? Um, I don't think there's a problem with ideas. Mm. In fact, I think I've got too many ideas. Mm. Um, <laughs> I've got notebooks of it and I just keep, I'm so worried that I'd forget something. So I just keep adding to my list. So I've probably got book ideas mm. for the next goodness knows how many years. Mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> because I guess I'm, I'm an impatient reader mm. and um, someone was saying with regards to the chapters, they start off a little bit longer and then gradually as you get through the book, they get shorter and shorter and shorter. And I, I wasn't aware of that. It wasn't a planned thing, but someone said, Oh my goodness, because I was trying to go to bed, but I had to, I had to just do one more chapter, one more chapter, one more chapter just to find out because they were, nice and short a bit like netflix yeah yeah and i think for a <laughs> reader that's that's sometimes for a reader something it like keeps you going and wanting to read it more and more and yeah just keeping staying yeah. up to read it to find out what's going to happen that's right keeping you up till two in the morning that's yeah. not good <laughs> yeah and um sarah wonders how you stay motivated when writing um, I, I think with writing, like any profession, I mean, writing, you've got to, it's like a muscle. Mm. You've got to, it's like the gym. You know, if you're going to get, you know, fit, you need to go for walks, you need to do things. So if you're going to, you know, get on with your writing, you need to write every day. It's like a muscle that you train. Mm. Also, sometimes perhaps we don't feel like, you know, writing or editing or whatever we're doing. I think mm. you just have to glue your little, behind to the seat and just get it done because once you start you actually get swept along anyway yeah yeah so, yeah and um jill's wondering if you've got a favorite character so far i really like bill mm. our policeman i think he's a wonderful you know man middle-aged family minded community minded <laughs> Um, he's got some baggage mm. and we find that out in book two, um, a little bit more about what, what happened to him and why he returned to his roots. Um, he was born in Matakana, went away, did big city policing and then came back. So in Blood on Vines, um, he's been working in Matakana for 10 years, mm. very happy with the slower pace of life, doesn't want the action. Um, I, I like him. I think mm. he's a, a, a nice fella. Yeah. And Sarah wonders if you have any writing rules you stick with that work for you. Not really. Mm. I'm quite undisciplined, I think, <laughs> apart from just the sitting down and just, you know, getting words down. I don't know. I don't think I've got any... No, I don't have to have like a scented candle or anything like that. Mm. Oh, actually, no, like, I, I need coffee. Mm. Coffee is what I need. Mm. <laughs> Do you have a favourite place to write? Um, I've, I, I, I normally just write at home. Mm. Um, I mean, on occasion, I'll t or before COVID, I used to bring it, bring the computer to a cafe. Mm. Um, but, of course, that's not happening quite mm. as much anymore. So I just, I just write at home. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And um, when you started writing Blood on Vines, what do you think came to you first, the plot, the characters, or the um, location? The location, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then I knew I wanted um, Bill, the policeman, mm. and then the characters grew around that. Mm. Quite exciting. Mm. Uh, I think I, I even culled some characters. There were just too many. And do you use characteristics from people you know? Well, perhaps. I, I, <laughs> Have you I had anyone say, recognize, think they recognise themselves? No, I think it's a, a mishmash of maybe a little bit from that person, a little bit from something I've read, a little bit mm. from that. Mm. Uh, but yes, I mean, you know, being a writer, I think you always, you know, you, you read things in the paper, you see things, mm. you know, you watch things on the whatever. 
you hear conversations and you go, oh, that's really good. And you might make a note, mm. you know. Mm. So you never know if you're going to end up in a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what sort of research have you done for Blood on Vines? Uh, it's, well, that's actually probably my, one of my favourite parts, mm. the research. Um, Lots of wine. I, um, sorry? Lots of wine. Oh, yes, a little bit of wine to, you know, learn about that. Um, I, and obviously talking to um, people at, at, a, at a vineyard. Um, but the most interesting thing that I've done, I think, for this book is I attended a, a forensic conference, mm. um, which mm. was it was amazing. It was like a week. Mm, wow. So I joined the forensic society. Mm. And got to go to all these different workshops and lectures and meet all these amazing people that, you know, work with, you know, whether it's forensic dentistry or, or whatever, you know, whatever it might be. Mm. Um, very, very interesting mm. and, and, and very humbling. Mm. Yeah. And is there anything that you found when you were doing your research that really surprised you? Um, I know, I can't think of anything that really surprised me, really. Uh, I'm sure. I have to pause that question. I might think of another thing. Yeah. And Belinda <laughs> wonders, when you start writing, do you know how your book will end? I do. Um, I, I kind of know what the beginning is going to be like. Mm. And I know kind of the end. It's just the bit in the middle that I'm a little bit unsure of. Mm -hmm. So I just start writing with Blood on Vines and, I, and what's happened to, you know, the next book in the series is that I've got to about half the halfway point and I realise, oh, goodness, you know, it's a little bit like a jellyfish. Mm -hmm. I need to really, really sit down and make sure all the plot points you know, convene and that it makes sense and, you know, otherwise it's easier that it goes on a tangent yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So yeah. I always thought I was a bit of a pantser, you know, the pantsers mm. and the plotters, and mm. just write, plotters, plot out everything. But I think I'm a combination of both. Mm. So I start, you know, the beginning, the end, uh, just write, and every, a lot of things develop, and then I get to the midpoint and I need to sort of really rein people in and just tell them to, you know, stick in their lane. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I like your, the way you've described that. And I'm wondering if what so far you have found to be the most difficult part of your writing process. Um, I think probably the, the multitude of drafts that you have to do, or at mm. least I feel, you know, being, um, a, you know, my first book, I, mm. I really, I think I did five or six drafts before mm. I went to the first edit. Mm. I really wanted to present something that was, you know, as polished as I possibly could. Um, so I, I think it's the editing, and that's something I, I'm not loving, yeah. you know, going over and over and over. I love the first draft where you just, you just let your imagination run, run wild and just get it all, get the story down. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did you do any courses or training before you started writing your book? No, no, I didn't. And I think people think you have to go mm. and do, you know, massive creative writing courses and things. Mm. I think that helps possibly, mm. but you don't have to. Uh, I think the most important thing when you're writing is to read, mm, you yeah. know, read wide and, and, and then build on that Yeah. and take just, just, you know, a lot of people want to write a book and they're, they're a bit worried, they're a bit scared, but all of this is a blank page and, you know, you just start mm. and the first couple of pages might not be that great, but you get better. As I say, it's mm. like that muscle that you mm. train. Mm. And are you an author who likes to share it with someone as you write or you just get right through it and then give it to your editor? Or? Yeah, no, I, I'm fairly secret squirrel. Mm. I like to keep it to myself until it's at a stage where I've redrafted it maybe a couple of times. Mm. Then I give it to some trusted readers mm. and just go, you know, does it make sense? 
what you know do you like it what you know what about this character and they give me feedback um and then i take that on board um and i may or may not change things mm -hmm. um and then um i'll probably just do another draft and then i'll send it on to the mm. and what's the writing community like where you are do you have connections with other authors and yes i mean it's it's really great the new zealand mm. authors um or the around where i am mm. um fabulous bunch uh and we catch up um and uh and you know give each other you know encouragement mm. and um you know help where we can i think it's really important mm. yeah that's great to hear well thanks so much for talking to me great being talking to you again and thanks for being involved in our group again just wondering, do you want to let people watching know how they can keep in touch with you? Yes, of course. Um, I'm on social media, so I'm on Instagram and Facebook. So Madeline uh, Eskadal author, um, and you can follow me on my daily adventures. There's a lot of um, the Three Musketeers, my mm. Westies, um, my my co-workers. So they're generally mm. under my desk when I work, <laughs> um, and um, yeah, and obviously some some bookish news. So Madeline Eskadal, author. Well, thanks so much, and I look forward to reading Rings on Water when that's out, and hopefully we might be able to talk again then. I look forward to it. Thank you so much for having me, Jackie. Thanks, and thanks to everyone who joined in with some questions. Thanks. Bye, everybody.